I would read into the record, for the benefit of those delegates who were unable to remain to close the session, the declarations and resolves of this first Congress. Resolve that to the recent grievous acts imposed by Parliament on Massachusetts, we cannot submit, but in hopes that our fellow subjects in Great Britain will restore to us happiness and prosperity, rather than support the Massachusetts militia, we have agreed to pursue the following peaceable measures. To publish a statement of the aforesaid to the inhabitants of British America. Who need no reminders. Two, to enter into a non-importation, non-consumption, and non-exportation agreement of British goods. Which no one will honor. And three, to prepare a loyal address to His Majesty. Which His Majesty will not read. This Congress stands adjourned. The business of this Congress being concluded, all delegates are respectfully the reminded. Congress, the business of this Congress has been to achieve nothing. In the year of our Lord, 1775. You carry good news back home, Mr. Payne. Massachusetts has made its cause plain to its sister colonies, and now it will be made plain to Parliament. I, uh, I beg to differ, Mr. Dickinson. Nothing has been made plain. All this Congress has shown is that every man in it thinks that he is a great man, orator, a critic, uh, a statesman, and therefore every man must uh, show his oratory, his criticism, his political ability. <laughs> if it were moved and seconded that two and three make five, we should spend two whole days debating the matter and only then pass a resolution in the affirmative. Well, in that event, Mr. Adams, our adjournment comes not a moment too soon. <laughs> a toast, gentlemen and ladies. May Boston's troubles soon be at an end and our people's natural rights as Englishmen be fully restored. May the sword of the parent never be stained with the blood of her children. God save the king. God, God save, save the king. God save the king.